that's a good Hi, I'm Dr. Cindy Dupuy. I have a PhD in learning disabilities. I do diagnostic assessment, advocacy, and intervention. I'm also an adult with dyslexia and dysgraphia. Hi, my name is Kim Sharman. I work with kids with dyslexia and dysgraphia for the last 15 years, ages kindergarten through college. I think we've been doing it. You've been doing it more than 15 years, but maybe we've had a conversation. Maybe 20. Anyhow. All right. We're going to talk about digit span today. Do you know what digit span is, Kim? Digits. That's one yeah. kind of digit. Digit <laughs> span is where I read you a series of numbers. And what do you have to do? I just remember I was good at this. You could, you have to remember to do it forward and backwards. Okay. But there's another one on that too. Okay. So on the digit span forward, I would read you a series of numbers like um, seven, two, eight, six. And you would say? Seven, two, eight, six. Excellent. And then I do, we do digit span backwards. So now I would say um, four, nine, three, five. Four, nine, three, five. Uh, five, three, nine, four. Good. What did you just do? I had to, I was playing in my brain um, the picture of the numbers going this way. And I was slowly, as you see, trying to go backwards. Right. So you repeated it forward so that you could reverbalize it, visualize it, and then read it backwards. But I start to get lost when it gets longer because I don't have something. Which as is all people do. Okay. As all people do. And then the last one is sequencing. So now I read you a series of numbers and you have to tell them smallest to largest. So if okay. I said um, eight. Two, five, three. So two, three, five, eight. There you go. Why is that one easier for you? Because you just went like that with that one. Hmm. I don't know. I have kids that'll peg it off their fingers. Oh. Like they'll think about which, like they'll think about. Well, the or the lesser and greater than gives you an added tool to repeat them. That's why. Yeah. Okay. So digit span forward is just short term memory. Can I remember what I've heard? Okay. But as we know, there is no test that exists in isolation. We've only talked about this like 900 times, right? Um, and so one potential problem that you can have with digit span forward is what? And it's not going to, I'm not going to say attention first, which I know is always one that we throw out, but. Um, with digit span forward. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, not sequencing digit span, uh, working memory or, um, picture. I don't know. Did I hear the numbers correctly? Oh, hmm. right. Was I tuned in and did I discriminate? Not huge. Cause there's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They all sound pretty similar, right? And is there meaning associated with the sound associated with the number too? Right. So they, some kids can be like, did I hear that correctly? And they'll, or I'm not sure, or they're trying to rehearse it and they'll miss one. Okay. Rehearsal is where somebody's saying five and the kid goes five, seven, seven, five, seven. Like, as you hear it, you try and repeat it back. So and let's try this out. Well, I'm going to say the numbers, and you're going to try and repeat them in between each one. You ready? Five, two. Oh, you're supposed to do it auditorially. Oh. Five. So so you give me a series of numbers, and let me, let me model how this happens. Okay. Seven. Seven. Eight. Seven, eight. Four. Seven, eight, four. You're not doing it quite fast enough, but you get the I idea. see. So, okay. and the reason why they're doing that is they're taking uh, an auditory thing and turning it into a verbal thing. So well, they can... they're, they're rehearsing it as they go along because then they don't forget the beginning items. Mm. Okay. I have people that visualize it, which is what you're trying to do on the reverse thing where they're like trying to mentally or they'll write with their fingertip on the tabletop, you know, five, three, nine, and the act of writing helps them remember. And what's confusing to me is why is this um, an indication of the IQ of intelligence? Because if you can't remember what somebody tells you, it's difficult to learn. Oh, 
that makes sense. Yeah, I like to do that every once in a while. It makes sense. Okay, so that's digit span forward. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about digit span backwards. Mm -hmm. I say this and everybody goes, oh my God. And I'm like, and then I give them a joke of, well, look, it's going to be super easy. Seven, two. And they go, two, seven. I'm not like, see, they're like, yeah, but that's super short. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm giving them a hard time to try and relax them. <laughs> but, uh, and I only do that in practice items. I don't do that when we actually do items. But um, why is the backwards so much harder? Um, why is the backwards? I'm having to retranslate in my brain the order in which you gave them. Right. So you've got to hold all of that and resequence. Okay. You repeated the entire sequence for it, which was quite common where people will do that. What I've had some people do is chop one each time. So let's say our sequence is seven, nine, three, five. Okay. So somebody would go seven, nine, five, three, yes. nine, seven. Yeah. I did a little okay, bit. So of that. they're chopping one each time. Okay. Again, writing on the desktop with your fingertips, seven, five, three, nine, nine, three, five, seven. And so by There's writing all different ways to hold on to that. Some people do it with a with a song. Some people do it with visual. Yep. Some people will try and visualize the actual numbers. I personally cannot do that to save my life, which is why I can't air spell. Because mm -hmm. I can't see, like, I have to write it out to spell it. Otherwise, I can't, I just can't visualize the word that way. Interesting. Um, so that one, that one, like, most people are like, gut punch. Mm -hmm. Ironically, the one that I find to be the easiest is the sequencing. Mm. And that's where you have to give them in order from smallest to largest. What was your strategy? Let's do another one and see, and think about what you're doing, Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to give you one that is more consistent with some of the harder items. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? I'm going to, I'm trying to come up with strategies. Okay, go. Okay. Four, five, seven, five, four. Four, five, seven, five, four. Did I do that right? Now give them to me in order. You mean backwards or forwards? Smallest to largest. Oh, oh, four, I'm five, seven. Another one because you just lost it. So no, six, I got four, five, seven, five, four. Okay, now give them sequentially. Um, four. You have two fours. Four, four, five, seven. I lost one. Yes, you did. Dang. Should we try Go another ahead. one? Yeah. Okay. I cheat. <laughs> no, you can't write them down. You ready? <laughs> Two, eight, three, two, eight. Two, eight, three, two, eight. Two, eight, three, two, eight. Two, two, three. Yeah, I have problems. Eight. Two, 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 three, eight, eight. Or is that right? Yeah. So, is it because I'm old, or what's happening here? Um, your. I don't know what you're doing. If I gave it to you, if I gave you four and you had built up, I think you would have a strategy. Right. But giving you five, just kind of cold, I think is what threw you. Mm -hmm. There's okay. a certain number. And yeah. like, yeah. yeah. And, and again, this indicates intelli this helps as a marker for Intel or IQ because it allows you to remember everything that was ever said to you. Well, also think about it. So let's let's apply this in context. So let's say you're in college and you're taking notes from a lecturer. You, it, if you're keyboarding, you can theoretically transcribe everything that the professor is saying. Okay? Actually, I can do it with writing. Okay. Every word. That's because you write super, super fast and you write super large and you don't worry about it. Right. But best note taking is to summarize. And to summarize means you've got to think about how to reorganize the data mm -hmm. and categorize it in a way that makes sense. I would do that after I came home with all my 100 pages of notes. Because it's too hard for you to do it in the moment. That's right. So we're pounding on your working memory. 
you have developed a workaround strategy, which is I'm going to repeat everything that you've actually said yep. in writing exactly yep. as you said it. I'm going to yep. come home, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to condense it because I can't do it in real time. So that's that's working memory issues. That's working memory issues. That's very interesting because I do that with jury duty too. Does that make sense then that that's why you develop that strategy? Yes. But you yourself have shared with everybody that you have attention deficit. Yeah. A walking case study and attention deficit, which I adore. Thanks. Part of what makes Kim fabulous is Kim, right? Is is the fact that you are aware of everything all at once and um you always say what you think. Um well, and and I and that that is my strategy because I wanted to do well in school. I got A's, I mean, not in college all the way, but that's how I did it. I would right. take every word down, come home and I'd study and I'd right. reorganize and rewrite. Right. And I happen to be really good at being able to summarize. And matter of fact, we've had conversations where you're like, I wish I had recorded that, Cindy, because you said it beautifully. And I can come out with these beautiful, clear statements in the moment off the cusp and can do the same thing when I'm taking notes. Right. So I can summarize very quickly. And that was my compensation strategy of I'm not going to be able to write everything down because of my dysgraphia. I've got to truncate and I've got to summarize cleanly, efficiently and smartly to minimize the number of words. Right. Wow. But that's good for parents to understand that these issues that we have, there are workarounds and we're intelligent enough to figure a way around it. And we can teach kids these strategies. Like this is not, this is not some miraculous, oh my gosh, no. gift kind of thing. Um, I had to develop this over the years because what I was doing previously wasn't working. And so I had to figure something out. You were doing something. It wasn't working. You had to do something to figure it out. And not every strategy works for everybody in the exact same way. And so the key is to teach kids lots of different strategies and have them find one that resonates with them, that they can work with, that they can then morph. And my my mantra to every kid is, I'm going to force you to try a strategy, not because I want you to keep it, but because I want you to make a conscious choice as to what you're doing strategy-wise so that then it's more effective for you, okay? By the way, you can also build working memory skills. You can. Oh, Yes. Matter of fact, um, they have memory competitions all the time. They have huge memory competitions where people will memorize an entire deck of cards in an hour. Like there's all sorts of things. So just because your working memory score is weak now doesn't mean it has to stay weak. It does mean you have to practice something that's not always fun to practice because it's hard which means you have to start low and easy and build skill set. Yeah. So if you find that five digits is too much, we need to go back and practice with three, get three fluid, then build the four, then build the five, and so on. So for example, if I gave you eight, three, one, you would be able to sequence those as? Eight, one, three, eight, yeah. That's super easy. Okay, so eight, two, eight. Two eight eight, and then if we built before, right? So you could build this skill set as you go along. But you really can build that, yes. Because it always seems like there's a breaker, like that number five. That five is a, and then it's destroyed. I mean, the 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 mantra is most adults can do seven plus or minus two, which means most adults can do between five and nine numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but again. Just because working memory is weak now doesn't mean it has to stay weak. Okay. And we can build skill set and there's value in building this skill set. And that's why it's such a central part of IQ tests. Interesting. And with that, we'll see you later. <laughs>